I spent $138 and ran 36 different tests to discover the best to scale model snow. Hopefully it was worth it. What up, mini family? Recently I had a hankering to make some snow bases because we're in peak summer here in Minnesota and apparently two thirds of the year isn't enough winter for me. But I realized something. I know very little about snow bases. This realization sent me down a rabbit hole of testing. So let's dive right in. First, let's introduce the contestants, which will be linked in the description below. In fact, any tool or material that I use will also be linked down there and anything purchased through these links will help support the channel and no extra cost to you. And it means a lot to receive your support in this way. We'll be using two kinds of snowy materials in these tests. First, we'll be looking at some particulates. These guys have the benefits of being very matte looking in certain circumstances and also have a nice physical texture. They are the good old faithful baking soda, micro balloons, and Woodland Scenic's soft flake snow. The other category of snowy materials we're testing are more paste-like with the benefits being sculptability, thinnable with water, and in certain circumstances, a little easier to use than their particulate counterparts. The contestants for this category are golden heavy gel matte, molding paste, light molding paste, and Liquitex Natural Sand. We'll also be mixing hybrids of these two categories later in the video. We'll be testing on some faux bases that I made up for these trials, but every method that I use will be one that you can use for a base that already has a model on it. Let's start with the particulates. Our first method of adhering will be with PVA glue and then tapping the product off immediately, which is how I normally adhere my basing materials. Both micro balloons and baking soda fared very poorly, micro balloons being the worst. Of the three, the tiny balloons are the second smallest in particle size, baking soda being the smallest. For some reason, the balloons didn't want to stick to the PVA glue, resulting in a very washed out effect. Baking soda seemed to get caught in every nook and cranny, washing out the color of the base tone where you didn't want it to, and not sticking very well to the PVA glue either. Woodland Scenic's Snowflake worked the best with this method, being the largest in particle size, but it's a little bit too large to be in scale all on its own. Okay, maybe the solution is to let each product sit on the PVA glue for a few hours and then tap it off. So let's try that. This seemed to help baking soda and it didn't affect the others at all. The downside of baking soda when used in this way, however, is that it yellows over time. So, unless you want your army to be fighting on a pea-tinted snow battlefield in like a year from now, I think you probably want to avoid this method. We'll talk about how to address this problem in the future of this video in case you got the hots for everybody's favorite leavening agent. Where are you at, bakers? I see you! These tests reminded me of what I really dislike about PVA glue, and that's that it takes forever to dry. And the snow actually shifted in color over time as it soaked up more moisture. It got more and more translucent. So, what about super glue? We'll start with medium CA glue. I applied some straight to the base, followed by each basing material, and then tapped it off after 10 minutes of waiting, learning my lesson from the previous tests. For both micro balloons and baking soda, we get something that looks kind of like frosty ice rather than snow, which is cool, but not what we're going for. With Woodland Scenics, we get a fluffier version of our initial tests. Okay, interesting results. What if we first apply our basing material and then drop thin CA glue on top of it? Baking soda has a late winter melty snow look. Could be good for certain scenarios. Micro balloons almost seemed to repel the thin CA glue. Where baking soda immediately absorbed the super glue, micro balloons were much slower and while it eventually did absorb the thin CA glue, it was kind of a hassle to deal with, but eventually produced a different look. Woodland Scenics immediately absorbed the CA glue and also looked a little melty, but still had obvious big particles, which was kind of weird. All three tests produced a glossier version of their PVA glue counterparts. Remember earlier when I mentioned we were gonna discuss ways of preventing baking soda from yellowing? 
What you need is a protective layer to shield the baking soda from contaminants in the air with reacting with it to yellow it over time. Things like a varnish or a medium mixed into the baking soda works, but in this case, super glue is acting as that protective barrier. All right, those are our particulate tests. Let's move on to our pastes. Both Golden Heavy Gel Matte and Liquitex Natural Sand dried very translucently. Natural Sand had a texture to it and was much glossier, whereas Golden Gel was a little bit more opaque and smoother. Both helpful tools in our snowy arsenal, but not good enough as a daily driver snow material. The story gets more interesting when we look at light molding paste and molding paste, both from Golden. Neither is matte as the bottle would suggest. They have a little shine to them, light molding paste being the more matte of the two. But what the lighter version has that the normal doesn't is built in texture and it's the perfect amount. I'm actually glad it isn't fully matte either. Snow has a little sheen to it and this product has a very nice finish. Okay, cool. Those are my tests for just straight up snow, no frills, but what if you want frills? What if I want a bedazzled blue jean jacket and tassels? What if, huh? Are you gonna deny me my rhinestones? Who are you to deny me my rhinestones? Calm down, Scott. Okay, let's indulge in the frill a little bit and make this snow sparkle, baby! There are three main methods we'll use to sparkle up our snow. We'll mix in a pearlescent powder, we'll mix in some metallic medium, and we'll try out some crushed glass. For these tests, we'll only use the light molding paste from Golden for consistency. Shout out to Vince Venturella, another miniature painting YouTuber, for giving me the idea of adding some kind of sparkle goodness. First, we need to figure out the correct ratio of sparklicious additive to paste. I have a few tests here with various ratios. The paste can start to break down if you use too much powder. However, one part of paste to two parts powder kind of looks like scale silver coins, which gives me ideas for the future. It seems like powder goes pretty far, so less is more. A ratio of two parts paste to one part powder works great, and you could probably get away with using a lot less. Now what about Vallejo Metal Medium or Scale 75 White Alchemy? These products are designed to be added to non-metallic colors to give them a little metallic sheen. This seems like it would work great because I can keep adding without the paste breaking down like with powder. So I went a little crazier with these tests. With Scale 75 White Alchemy, I wasn't getting much of an effect and my mixture was becoming more and more of a paint and less of a textured paste. When I swapped over to Vallejo Metal Medium, however, I got a nice mid-range sparkle. I also started testing a different powder. Up until this point, I had been using Pearlescent White from Pearl X, but I gave Interference Blue a shot and got a very nice, subtle blue sparkle. Very snowy. The problem with these additives, however, is that they color the snow in a very slight way, so it's no longer pure white. I thought I could alleviate some of this issue by adding in some crushed glass instead of powder or paint for the sparkle. This is actually a normal basing product that people sell, but I didn't have any, so I crushed some myself. Warning, this is probably not safe, so don't do it. I crushed it under some plastic wrap and was wearing a mask to prevent any airborne particles from getting into my lungs. After it was crushed, I added it to the paste, then applied it to the base. While it did add some amount of sparkle without tinting the snow, I don't think it was worth the hassle of having to try and grind the glass up to a powder. So I would avoid this if I were you. Alright, something I haven't talked about yet is a method a lot of you probably know that I'll refer to as the internet slurry. This is taking a bunch of products and mixing them together into a paste to then smear onto the base. I've even done this in the past on several videos. What I've used previously is baking soda, matte medium, and water, a mixture inspired by the great massive voodoo miniature painting blog. The value of this method is that you can make it as thin or as fluffy as you want by adding more or less baking soda. But can we improve the internet's finest? Let's mix in some of that sparkly goodness, some woodland scenic soft flake snow for some particle size variation, and I think we have something interesting. At this stage in our evolution, people often put in white paint, but I find that this obscures the sparkle, so I prefer to keep it out. Okay, this is looking better, but can we make it even better? Well, let's make a little dry mix of our micro balloons and soft flake and sparkly pigments. Now, once we've applied our improved internet slurry, we can sprinkle on some of the dry mix to get even more variety. 
Note, I'm using micro balloons instead of baking powder for this dry powder mix because we're not putting a layer on top of this to protect it and I wanna avoid uh, mm, pea snow. I think you know where this is going. The more fun variety you add, the better the end result. So let's put it all together. Let's slap on some slurry, dust on our dry stuff, apply some of that gel medium to simulate some melty snow at the edges, and maybe add a little bit of teal wash and bang, we got a nice looking varied snow base. Well, those are my tests and my results, but what are my recommendations? Well, for the painter on a budget, it's kind of hard to be baking soda and some kind of protective additive like a medium or a varnish, preferably the satin or matte kind. You could even try to mix baking soda with like Elmer's glue or PVA glue as a form of a varnish, but I've never done that, so I don't know if it holds up over time. The baking soda scales up to larger scales like 75 mil and also down to 28 mil perfectly. For the painter who has a little bit of cash and maybe less time, I'm a huge fan of golden light molding paste. No, this is not golden molding paste, specifically golden light molding paste. This has a built-in texture. It's thick enough to be pushed around and keep its form. You can thin it with water, and also it dries to a rock hard finish. It really is a great all-in-one product. Some other standout products were golden heavy matte gel for a little bit of ice or melty snow, or Liquitex natural sand for some melting snow that had a little bit of texture to it. It's worth mentioning that baking soda with thin CA glue over top produced also a lovely melting snow effect. Finally, what about sparkles, man? For a powder additive, I liked Pearl X's Interference Blue a lot. And for more of a paint additive, Vallejo Metal Medium worked a lot better than Scale 75's White Alchemy for my tests. Well, that's it for my commentary on snow and tests and results. How are you guys gonna expand on what was demonstrated in this video? Do you like the time savings of light molding paste or are you willing to combine some of the techniques to maybe get a better result? Let me know in the comment section below. It's worth mentioning that I also did some frozen water tests, but this video is already long enough already, so we'll save those for a rainy day. Hi. If you guys wanna see some snow in action, make sure to check out the John Snow video. If you guys like the channel and you wanna support it, me and this little kitty called Moose, you can find links in the description that will enable you to do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out and chat about your miniature painting projects or your favorite uh, poster size. Is it A4 or is it A8? I don't even know if those are sizes. You can also purchase products that I recommend in the description below or just shop on Amazon with my affiliate link. And then you can also buy some fun merch like this t-shirt here. Sorry, Moose. <laughs> like this t-shirt here, and also a new product, the Paint More Minis Flat Brim. All things linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to Paint More Minis! Unless you want your army to be fighting on a snow-tinted battlefield. What? I thought I could alleviate this problem by adding in some crushed glass for the parkle. For the parkle? Well, for the miniature war painter on a Miniature War Painter. If you want to see some snow in action, make sure to check out the John. Hmm, check out.